This screencast covers the updates, changes, and feature modifications to the Windows 7 release candidate from Windows 7 Beta. If you would like a complete list of changes, please download the What's New in RC document available here on Springboard. The release candidate of Windows 7 builds on the investments that Microsoft made in Windows Vista and the beta version of Windows 7 to deliver an operating system that boots quickly, is fast, more reliable, more secure, gets the most out of today's powerful hardware, and connects with your broad world of devices that you use every day. Fundamentals have been a key focus for Windows 7. The release candidate further helps to improve these fundamentals across a range of computer types. A few examples include some of the refinements that we've made to help improve your experience across startup, shutdown, resuming from standby, search, indexing, and even the recognition of USB devices. We've given you faster access to power plans. As you know, when you click a power plan, you will see your balanced and high performance. If you wanted to add a different setting, unlike, uh, let's say, moving to our power options, uh, let's say power saver or high performance, we could simply click that, and now we'll see balanced and high performance. Bringing back power saver option, simply click power saver, close, and our power saver and balanced. Once again, since I'm at that, I can now choose high performance, close out, reopen, and now I see balanced and high performance and power saver is now gone. Again, the way that you work is the way that Windows 7 works. We also help you get online and stay online through whatever type of connectivity is available. The release candidate adds new networking drivers, help you increase coverage across both wired and wireless networks, and give you better coverage on many notebooks. A user account control feature was introduced in Windows Vista. In the release candidate, the UAC panel now runs in a high integrity process, and furthermore, any changes to UAC will now prompt for confirmation. The taskbar is a primary way to access the files and applications you use most often. Additional improvements have been made to this familiar component of Windows, including taskbar scaling. Pinning a program helps the taskbar to be allow you more convenient access to what you want. Depending on your resolution, icon size, and assuming a default notification area, you'll now see significantly more buttons before the taskbar overflows and begins to scroll. For example, at a resolution of 1024 by 768, you'll now see 15 large icons, representing a 25% improvement from the beta. In 27 smaller icons, you'll be able to get seeing a 38% improvement when using small icons, in which you can put 22 max in. Open with one of the newer features. You can now grab a file and by holding down shift and dragging it on top of an icon like paint, we'll see it now says open with paint. When I release that, I'll now see that the picture has been now opened up with the Paint program. If I simply just double click the picture, I'll notice I'll open it up with the Windows view with the Windows Photo Viewer. Quick launch shortcuts made it easier and simpler for you to open up programs. So for example, if I wanted to open up Paint by simply clicking the Windows key, and since it's the third icon, the number three, I open up Paint. Solitaire, Windows 4. My calculator, Windows 5, and Windows Media Player, Windows 6. So very simply and very, very easily, I've made it so that I can get to the files that I need most often more quickly. With my arrow integrated touch, I can now use some new features, including a new Alt-Tab shortcut for the first 10 items on the taskbar. And I can now see that simply by moving through, I now get full screen preview of everything that I'm working with Again, simply and easily. Jump list. Maximum of 10 items are automatically suggested on a jump list. It will make it easier for you to find the things that you use most often. So, for example, by simply right-clicking, I now see not only three sites that I've pinned, but I also see a new area, tasks, in private, and new tab. 
If I choose to open a new tab, I simply click and a new tab opens up. Once again, new tab, and I add very quickly and easily new tabs to this version of Internet Explorer. If I'd like to move into In Private Browsing, by simply clicking In Private Browsing, it'll open up a new window. In Private Browsing is a great feature if you're using a public computer and you're looking to make sure that you don't leave any personal information behind. It will delete cookies, temporary internet files, history, and other data used within that browsing session. You can also reach In Private Browsing by simply going into the Safety tab inside of IE8. As before, we can always simply move through all open windows and close windows as we did in the beta, but you'll now notice we do see icons for the various websites up at the top of the image icon. Jumpless icons will also be found in additional places. So for example, if I take a look here at Windows Media Player, I can see a video that I ran previously, as well as being able to see some music that I was also playing a little bit earlier and I can very simply switch through those recently played areas simply by moving through my jump list. Office programs will also do this with PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Paint, Notepad, uh, etc. Another area where we'll see some further integration will be in with Windows Live Messenger, Windows Media Center also showing your most frequent and played, get started areas, in addition to the jump list that we see in the bottom, we'll also find jump lists in things like Microsoft Office products, where again, in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, you'll see your most recent documents. In programs like Live Messenger, you'll be offered additional tasks before you log into or while you're working with the program. And of course, in things like Media Center, just like we did in Windows Media Player, to be able to see your most frequently accessed, or at least last 10, accessed documents. You will notice that the player mode now that we see, which we saw a few moments ago, is now smaller, a little bit more kempt, and easier to work with. What we've done is we've made it a more lightweight experience. It's a little bit cleaner, provisionally provides an update and a more compact view, so it fits onto a small window on your desktop much easier. We've also added some themes and sounds. If I take a look at Personalize, we'll notice that we've created some brand new sound schemes and visual schemes for you. Visually, architecture, characters, landscape, where you can simply just click. And the great thing is now if we pick a theme that we like, so if we decide to change a window color, and we decide to change a sound scheme, let's say from characters to landscape, and click OK. We can now save this theme and call it our new theme. We could also choose to save this theme for sharing if we wanted to share it with others. So new themes gives you more options, makes your com computer reflect your personal tastes. We have landscapes, nature, architecture, a wide variety of sounds and pictures to fit each person's personal tastes. The release candidate extends virtualization technology to end users, small to medium businesses, through a new feature called Windows XP Mode. Windows XP Mode, together with virtualization technology, such as Windows Virtual PC, provides a virtual XP environment in which you can run many existing Windows XP applications on a Windows 7 based PC. To learn more about Windows XP Mode and the new version of Windows Virtual PC, visit us at Microsoft.com forward slash springboard. You'll see several documents on the XP mode and virtual PC. You can also get more information at Microsoft.com forward slash virtual hyphen PC. Flexible access to applications and data from work and home and other locations is a critical comp component of any enterprise IT strategy. We've made changes to direct access in the smart card support. We've enhanced troubleshooting to include a new Windows troubleshooting entry point within the control panel. If a resource is not reachable, for example, if a website fails to load, you can use either the Diagnose Connection to Internet Explorer 8 or the Troubleshoot Computer Program tool to help you discover the cause of that issue. Our direct access notification has changed as well. A user will still see Internet access displayed, but will no longer get a specific notification around direct access. 
we've changed things like our reduced partition drive size for BitLocker and BitLocker to go. We've also added new AppLocker PowerShell commandlets and an on and only enforce mode for AppLocker. This screencast of the Windows 7 release candidate covered the features that allow you to work the way that you want, features that allow you to simplify your everyday tasks and make new things possible, that allow you to be productive anywhere, that help to enhance security and control, and that streamline PC management. For a complete list of all the changes in the release candidate, please visit springboard.com and download the What's New in Release Candidate 7 document.